Hello YouTube and welcome to the next installment in the life of a virtual airline pilot. I'm your host Captain Mac and we are getting ready for our fifth flight with Phoenix Virtual Airways and things are going pretty good. Uh, one of the things I did notice looking back at some of the previous videos is um, yeah, they're just a little long, so we're not going to spend quite as much time here today. We're just going to take a real quick look at our next flight. It's an Ameriflight uh, flight this time. Still Beach 1900. It's a freighter model. We can fly the D model still, no problem. Phoenix to Tucson. It's not very far. Total distance less than 100 miles. Weather information, we'll still use our active sky. You remember the last video I showed you about the dispatch function, and you can see here, like I said, there's sometimes a lot of different options. We're not going to use those. We're not worried about the charts. We're just worried about the basic flight information. We got it all right here. So let's hop on over to ACARS, and let's get our flight set up. Okay, we got our ACARS program all fired up. We've already gone ahead and grabbed our next bit it's a Meriflight uh, what, what was that number 1380 yep there it is right there <laughs> Meriflight uh, flight number 1380 it's gonna be from Phoenix to Tucson main thing we want to check here make sure that our departure location is our current location it is Phoenix uh, we'll go ahead and set up our route real quick we'll use the little cheater version here it's not really a cheater version it's just a faster version and we'll grab the second one there throw that on there's the route it's not very far no need to climb up real high. We're flying generally to the uh, southeast, just a little bit to the east. So we're on the east side of the compass. We're going to fly at an odd thousand. And uh, let's just take it up to 15,000 feet. That'll work for us. And once we get into the sim and we're ready to rock and roll, we just hit start flight and we'll be off and running. So I will see you in the aircraft shortly. Okay, welcome to Ameriflight Flight 1380. We are parked where Ameriflight should be parked at Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport. And we're not going to dilly dally around. We're going to pretty much jump right in here and get started on our before start checklist. So we know we're going to need to hop down here. So we're just going to roll right into this. We've already ensured that our cabin and cargo doors are closed and locked. Baggage. Uh, it's not baggage, it's cargo. This is a cargo flight. Weight and center, gravity is taken care of. Control locks, seats, seat belts, parking brakes. All of that stuff is in good order. IFAS auxiliary power is not simulated in this aircraft. And so we're ready to get going at this point. So let's go ahead and flip the battery on first. And as soon as that comes on, we flip on our engine anti-ice switches. And then all our other switches are off. We've already ensured that, but just in case you're wondering, uh, well, actually, they're not because these are supposed to be off. So now the auto starts are off and off 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 pretty much everything else is off as it should be let's go ahead and shrink that guy down real quick I don't even know why it's sitting to the side like that but uh, there we go okay uh, pilot static air source needs to be set I'll go ahead and turn that on right now pilot air and defrost is checked that's these two right here they're good to go landing gear is down and locked we got all green lights on that now uh, we cannot check the uh, landing gear handle lights. We try to test them, doesn't work. We can't do anything about making sure the, uh, oh, I can't even think right now, the circuit breaker. The circuit breaker uh, is not simulated, it's just there visually. Alternate extension handle, still waiting on something in the comments, guys. If you know where that's at, or if it's simply you know that it's not simulated in this aircraft, please let me know. Let's hop on up to the overhead panel here. Mic selector switches both need to go to normal. Master panel lights as required. It's a daytime flight, so we don't need those. Beacon lights need to be on ground. That is one up for each of them. And battery voltage. We need to check the battery, TPL bus, and center bus. So battery should be at 23, TPL at 22, and center bus at 23. So center is first and that's at 22 as it should be TPL is the one I'm sorry it was at 23 TPL is at 22 that's good and batteries at 23 so we're good to go on those hop down here to the glare shield panel you remember I made the mistake of not remembering to press this but this was the button to test anyway for the enunciator lights good there avionics there's nothing we can do with those at the moment Power levers. We want to make sure that the power levels, levers, levers, can I talk? Yeah. 
Power levers in the idle position. Let's go ahead and move. They weren't in the idle position. That's idle right there. Propeller levels, lev levers. I can't talk, guys. We, we mentioned this before. I have a hard time talking, apparently. The uh, propeller levers need to be in the taxi detent, which is right there, and condition levers need to be in the fuel cutoff, and they are. Aileron trim and rudder trim are both neutral and set to zero. They, they're good to go. IFAS power switches need to be off. That's these two they are. And let's see, no re uh, reversionary panel. Still not sure about that. I'm pretty sure it's this guy, but all it says is uh, switches off or normal. So as far as I know, everything is normal there. We don't have rudder boost, elevator trim. It is here, but it's not simulated. And a skid and flashlight, not simulated. Excellent. Let's move on. Hopping over to the co-pilot side here. And we want to start with the bleed air valves. We would start with the clock and compass control, but there's nothing to do with those. So the bleed air valves, we need to make sure that those are closed. That's these right here. That's open. We want them all the way down for closed. Blowers are on auto. There's auto. Auto temperature is off. That's this one right here. Environmental mode control is off. This one here. Overspeed and stall warning test is this one, sorry. Still annoying, which means it still works. Engine, fire extinguisher, and detector tests. Remember, test A, we can't ever get it to show anything. If I'm missing something on that, please leave something down in the comments, and uh, we can make sure I get squared away on that. Test B, we do get our lights there, so our test is good on that one. Cabin air and co-pilot air, as required, or as desired in this case. And they're good to go. So the co-pilot static source, haven't been able to find that one yet either. Once again, guys, if you know where that's at, please leave something down in the comments below, and I'll be sure to uh, find it and take a look at that. So we're ready. That is our pre-start flow, if you will, and we are now ready for our startup checklist. So real quick, just as a reminder, we're going to flip the auto ignition switch to arm. We're going to go ahead and flip up the right ignition and engine start switch. We're going to wait till our N1 stabilizes around 12%. Move the condition lever to low idle. As soon as that fires the engine, that'll go past 50% really quick. We'll turn the ignition switch off. Monitor temperature, monitor oil pressure, and oil temperature as well. Once all that's good and stabilized, up to high idle. Same thing for the left engine, except we never go to high idle. Any questions? Good, because I still can't hear you even if you try. So let's go ahead and kick this off. Ignition on. And we're just waiting for this guy to stabilize around 12%. On here it just says uh, when it ex it just says 12%. Um, so we just get close to 12% and we go ahead and kick that into low idle. Engine fires up past 50%. There she goes. Take a look at our temperature real quick. Close to 700 degrees Celsius. Torques back down. And we are in the green for oil temperature and oil pressure. So that being said, we can go ahead and move that to high idle now. Turn on the right generator. And then a little catch with that is, is uh, when you turn the right generator on, uh, then you hit the gen reset and then on okay which is uh it's this one i believe nope that's the gen ties i think it's, that is the gen reset and then on and now it says that the right gen tie open enunciator does not extinguish then we have a procedure to deal but it did extinguish so we're good to go on that so let's go ahead and move on to start for engine two or the left engine auto ignition on waiting for 12% on the N1 or close to 12% now if you're in the King Air 200 the start procedure is nearly identical but it says it must be stabilized it specifically says it must be stabilized at 12% so move that to low idle there it goes past 50 that goes off watch our temperature here torques back down green on the oil pressure green on the oil temperature, left gen on, and 
Now we just want to check our voltages again. So the battery, the right and left gen, and the center bus should all be 27.5 to 29. So battery is pretty close, 27.9. And then we want right and left gen and center bus. That's the TPL bus. Right gen's good, left gen's good. Center bus is definitely too low. We've had that problem every single time. TPL bus should be a 26.5 to 28. That's TPL bus. It is also too low. Don't think there's anything I can do about it. External power should be at zero. It should have been anyway because we never turned it. We never flipped on uh, external power. And let's see what else. Gen tie switch is supposed to be open. Let's hop down here and take a look at that. Gen tie switch uh, is in the normal position. That's manual close and sorry. And that is open. And what does that do for us? That should illuminate those. Yep, tie open. It illuminates those lights for us. Uh, so that's good to go. And then we check the TPL bus again, and it should be a 26.5 to 28 volts. So let's take a look. TPL bus, still too low. <laughs> so uh, then we go ahead and uh, we put the switch to normal and it should extinguish those lights. So let's go hop down here, flip this switch back to normal, which is up one. Lights are extinguished. We're good to go. Uh, bus sense switch is supposed to be tested, which is this one here. Test is down. And it doesn't say what should happen when you do that. So it doesn't show anything, but it just says reset it when you're done. So if you know what that's supposed to be doing, please let me know in the comments down below. Load meters are supposed to be paralleled within 10%. They most certainly are. We're good to go there. Our startup procedure is done. We don't need to do an engine clearing or restart. So we can roll right into our before taxi checklist. And let's take a look here real quick. Uh, we don't need to push back the aircraft. We're actually parked in a... Um, in a, a proper position for a Veriflight, actually, they park over there uh, and they just pull straight out. So panel lights, as required, we don't need any exterior lights. Let's hop up here real quick. We're gonna need that's the ice light. We don't really need it, but I turn it on anyway. Nav lights, they'll stay in ground for now. Recognition lights, taxi lights need to come on. Don't need cabin lights. Don't need flood lights on the tail. So we're good to go on exterior lights. Cabin lights are as required. We don't need any, and we don't have a cabin sign. At least not as far as I've ever seen. So we're good on that one as well. Avionics can come on at this point. That's this switch right here. We flip those on. That gives us our uh, vertical speed indicator. IFAS auxiliary power. Again, not simulated. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it is. Uh, it says to check if the co-pilot's electronic altimeter is illuminated, which it is. And uh, standby horizon power and standby instrument power it says on uh, not sure which ones are the standby power I have never seen those maybe it's this one nope that's for external power so we'll just hop over to the IFAS power switches flip those on if I've made a mistake here I missed something that I should be aware of please let me know down in the comments below I'm more than willing to learn as much as I can about this aircraft we're going to be flying it quite a bit more and we want to enjoy that uh, flight data recorder, we're not using it. Bleed air valves need to be open at this point, so we'll hop down over here real quick. These are the bleed air valves. Two clicks up, puts them open. Environmental mode control goes to auto. Instruments, uh, the, we're going to check the brightness. They're good. We don't need brake de-ice. And stall warning heat needs to be on. That's this one here. That is on now. Uh, what else? The enunciator should be extinguished, and it is. I don't think it was ever on, to be honest with you. Uh, power steering, if installed, it's not brakes. Cabin briefer, and I'm thinking, where does it show the, uh, real quick here, just trying to find where it shows the pedo heat, because I don't think I missed anything, but I'm not seeing pedo heat. So, uh, either I missed it, or 
I know it's supposed to be listed. Either way, we're going to go ahead and flip it on because I know it's supposed to be on. So there's the pedo heat there. And that's it. Our next checklist is going to be our before takeoff and run up checklist. So we are going to get ready for that here momentarily. And uh, I'm just going to pause the video for a second. Uh, but we're not going, I won't go anywhere. I'm going to stay right where I'm at and uh, just put a little pause in here real quick so that I can uh, get a couple things situated and we will be ready to rock and roll. So I will see you in a minute. Okay, just had to take care of a couple things there real quick, make sure everything was ready to go. Uh, double checking our weather both at uh, Phoenix and Tucson. And I uh, got our altimeter here for Phoenix, which is 29 or 9 or 6, you can see it in there. We're going to be taking runway 7 right, and we will be following the TFD 3 departure. So we're good to go on all that, so let's go ahead and just start taxiing out here. And uh, let's get this, get this show on the road. As always, this thing likes to taxi really quick. Even uh, even after you back off. A little fast there, we'll be alright though. Alright, we will take this first taxiway to the right here. And uh, looks like we might need just a little bit more on the throttles there. There, hopefully. Or maybe not. The uh, nose wheel in this aircraft is actually all the way up on the tip of this thing, so I know I'm not taxiing very well. I apologize for that. on up here to uh, Delta 1, and then we will take uh, Delta 1 across uh, runway 7 left to get ready to line up for 7 right. So there's Delta 2 we just passed. Slow it down here a bit. Those buildings are not that close. Default scenery, that's what you get. Uh, I'm actually, uh, you know, I know I said before, I'm not real big on payware airports, uh, unless I'm going to fly in and out of the airport a lot, but, you know, we're spending a lot of time in Phoenix, and to be honest with you, I'll probably spend a lot of time here in the future, so I might need to consider uh, picking up that uh, Phoenix payware airport, because uh, I like a good scene. i got to admit that, you know, it's... Uh, when I fly in there in real life, I know what I'm looking at. You know, I've got certain uh, certain landmarks that help me figure out where I'm at. It'd be kind of nice to have some of those. Now we're just gonna we're gonna assume we have ATC clearance to cross runway seven left here. Again, we're not using ATC. If somebody knows of a really good ATC program that doesn't sound like uh, a robotic voice that's uh, confused about how to talk, then please let me know. I'd be more than happy to uh, give it a look, but uh, for now, uh, I'm going to stick with no ATC. So just so you know, you're supposed to stop before that line there, that's the uh, ILS hold short line, that's where you're supposed to hold short, but uh, we're not actually right up on the line, you're actually supposed to stop where you can still see the line, so different aircraft uh, have to stop at different distances. All right, so that being said, let's go ahead and set our parking brakes real quick, and let's go through our before takeoff run-up. IFAS needs to be checked. We've already done that. We know the IFAS is good. And uh, the brightness level for our instruments is just fine. So we can hop over here to the next page, and uh, it says to check the air data computer. I have no idea how to check the air data computer, so uh, again, I don't even—I don't think that's simulated on this. But if it is, there's one of those things, guys. Please feel free to throw it down in the comments there, so that I can learn from it as well. Uh, where are we at here? We're on the ground proximity warning system test. Glide slow. Pull up. Pull up. 
And that's it. Test complete. We're good to go. Flight director, uh, that comes on with the autopilot. We're not going to flip that on quite yet. Uh, altitude alerter, I, I'm not sure how you check that. Um, but it is a warning that lets us know uh, we're coming up on our altitude. Usually sounds within a uh, thousand feet. Pressurization, we've gone ahead and taken care of that. That's this knob down here. Pressurization should be good. Environmental system has been checked. That's this guy over here. Uh, elevator trim, uh, we actually should be pretty good right where we're at there. And let's see, forward range for forward centers of gravity, aft range for uh, centers of gravity and aft half of envelope, and we're actually just about dead center, so we're in a good spot right there. Uh, we can't change the friction on the uh, engine controls, we already know that. Flaps do need to go down to 17 degrees. And there they are, 17 degrees, and we get our indicator right there as well. Flight controls, we want to check and make sure that they are free and correct. And they seem a little jittery in this airplane for some reason, but I think we'll be all right. We may do up to this point. Engine anti-ice is still on and will remain on until our after takeoff checklist. No other icing is necessary. Auto feather needs to come on. That's this one right here. And manual propeller feathering check. our propeller is feathered manually. Propeller controls need to go full forward. That's taken care of. And what else? Power level lev levels. I keep saying levels instead of levers. Power levers are at idle. That's where they belong. Vacuum and pneumatic pressure is supposed to be checked at idle. Uh, you know what? I'm not actually sure. Uh, I think the vacuum's over here, actually. Uh, where's it at? I know it's over here. <laughs> I know that one of these is the vacuum pressure. I also know our vacuum pressure is good because we don't have any failures or anything turned on like that. So we're just going to have to suck it up on this one. Final items real quick. Confirm that the uh, propeller levers, levers are full forward. They are. Confirm that the flaps are set, they are. Trim is set, it is. Brake de-ice is not needed. Stall warning heat, we need to confirm that that is on. And it is on. Uh, left and right pi dot heat, that's where it is there. It's all the way down here. Okay, well it is on. Uh, auto feather, need, we need to confirm that it's armed. We have transponder, we can't actually turn it on. But there it is right there, it is on. Ice protection as required, don't need it. Bleed air valves as required, we're leaving those as they are. Blowers on higher auto. They are now on auto. Environmental mode control as required. That's this one here. Uh, and we're good to go on that. That's the, the cabin temperature is that one there. Generator load has already been checked. Enunciators extinguished or considered. These enunciators are all good to go. We don't have any others. Interior, exterior lights are good to go. V1, V rotate, and V2. I like to just crank this down. We're not really using it, obviously, if I can crank it down. Uh, however, rotate is going to be about 135 knots. So we're going to leave that one right there. V1 is going to be pretty close to right there in the same. We are using the shoulder of the two runways here. And that is it. We are ready for takeoff. We're going to do a rolling takeoff on here. Once again, uh, unless I'm missing it, it's not showing the landing lights as part of the the uh, checklist there. So, flip the landing lights on, and we are ready to go. So, let's get this started. No sense hanging around here, right? And last second check there, everything's good to go. Brakes are off, landing lights are on. Let's go ahead and start rolling this guy out. We don't need to do a static takeoff, that's that's for certain. Oh come on, give that. Yeah, you gotta really just get those just right because see you get a couple couple percent higher and uh, and then it's it's too high, a couple percent lower is too low, and because of the delay in the run up there, uh, yeah. The, the little delay in the uh, the engine spinning up means you kind of tend to fiddle with it going back and forth. So we'll just get lined up on the center of the runway here. There we 
check, make sure we're right where we want to be, and let's start throttling all the way up. Positive rate, bring the gear up. We're making a near immediate but gentle left turn here. Uh, yeah. Gear up. Uh, let's trim down just a little bit. We don't need to climb quite that fast. And here we go. Looking good so far. Let's get that speed up just a little bit more and bring those flaps up. Go ahead and flip on the autopilot so that we can. Hold on, bring the flaps up here just a second. We're pretty light, we don't have a lot of fuel on here, so flaps are coming up. I did not shrink that down, I apologize. I know that's a little big, I'll shrink it down off screen here in a few minutes. And let's go ahead and turn our nav on, altitude hold on, yaw damper comes on, autopilot is on. Let's see if she's going to fly it. 3,200 feet is what it's saying, so we got just a little high there. Turn that off, make sure we don't overspeed. I think we're going to be just fine. And just so you know, 3,200 should be, uh, should be our... Uh, yeah, it's not actually telling us anything. Uh, so we got TFD. Okay, so we got a couple of issues with this here that I just noticed. Let's uh, let's just delete those real quick. This one needs to be deleted, and uh, this TFD needs to be deleted. And we can delete the vectors. We can delete this one, and that should take us now straight to TFD. Maybe there she goes. Um, gotta hit that GPS button there, and uh, yeah. I do have to take off the checklist, but we need to fly the plane first. Let's get the plane going where it needs to go. There's 15,000. Don't need that. Pop this back on real quick. Start our climb here. We are definitely going quick, so let's let's get going. Uh, get 1,000 feet per minute. I think we'll be good. And, okay, I think we do have to take off the checklist right now. Let's go ahead and take care of that. Flaps are up. Environmental mode control is on auto. Bleed air valves are open. Blowers are as required. Yaw damper is on. Climb power is what we need to set now. And uh, what we want to do is we want to roll this back to 1,550 RPMs on the prop pitch levers. You can see the prop pitch coming down there. It's just above the uh, digital N1. See it coming down. 1,550 is probably right about there. And uh, prop sync needs to come on. That's this guy right here. Flip that on. Windshield anti-ice is normal. We don't need it. And we're going to monitor the engine instruments. Cabin pressurization has already been checked. Lights are good for the moment. We don't have cabin signs. And that is it. This is us for now until we get to cruise altitude. So we're looking good. Beautiful looking scenery out there. Different departure than we took last time. And uh, you can see there's South Mountain there. You remember we flew up over there. We crossed South Mountain over here when we were headed over to New Mexico because we took a different runway. So there's the golf course we left you with before, and this is all farm fields over here with a small airport down below. And that's where I am going to leave you for a moment. Oh, look, another golf course. So I will leave you with that beautiful view of the golf course, and I will see you when we get up to cruise altitude so that uh, we can go through our cruise checklist real quick. Okay, here we are, 15,000 feet, our cruise altitude. We have no need to make a change to our altimeter. It's 296. We don't change that until we go above 18,000 or flight level 180. So let's go through our cruise checklist real quick. We want to set our cruise power, which uh, where we're at right now is going to be just a little higher than we want. We're going to bring it down around 92. That's about where I want to be, about 92. So 
ridiculous. Back them off a little bit. See if we can get it to about 92% and 1. And you can see that my throttles are just a little uneven. Back it off just a little more. That's going to that's gonna give us a pretty good speed there. So, and, uh, yeah, I'm okay with that. 93.4 is fine. Give it take just a bit. Uh, auto feather needs to come off at this point. As this one here. And there it is. It's off. Engine instruments we're going to monitor. That's this whole stack right here. We're going to continue to monitor those. Cabin signs we don't have. And uh, that's it until descent. And descent's not going to be that far away. But I'm not going to make you sit here for the next uh, 10 or 12 minutes of the flight. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just pause the video real quick. And I will come back to you just before top of descent. Alright, as you can see we haven't flown all that far at this point. But we are almost to top of descent. We've got about 6 miles to go. So I want to go ahead and knock out the descent checklist real quick so we can make sure we're on track here. And uh, you can see that uh, the difference in scenery is kind of neat. It should be pretty cool. We'll, we'll get a good look at it here in a couple minutes. But uh, real quick, we want to make sure our pressurization is set. We've done that already. Altimeter needs to be set. Uh, I did check. The altimeter is the same at uh, Tucson as it is in Phoenix. Windshield anti-ice is not needed. We don't need prop de-ice. Fuel balance, we'll take a look at that real quick. We can just hop right down here fuel balance looks really good. Power is going to be as required. Cabin brief, uh, that's for the passengers. That's going to be taken care of. We don't have a cabin sign, so we're good to go. So that's it until uh, until our uh, approach checklist. But uh, we are uh, just a couple miles from our top of descent here. And our next waypoint is Taku, Tasu, something like that. Uh, which isn't showing up on here. This one's showing uh, straight to uh, Baser or Basser next, but we want to be down. Uh, TFD uh, altitude is rolling, by the way. Baser, we want to be down to about 11.6, and ultimately we're trying to get down to. Uh, I don't know why it says 66.42 there at uh, Tucson, because obviously Tucson's not at 6,000 feet. Not too worried about that at the moment. It's not a big deal. Uh, we want to get down to. Uh, 4600 at uh, POSIB, POGIB, however you want to pronounce it. So let's go ahead and uh, we are there. Let's go ahead and start our descent at this point. And we said 11,000 and change. Let's just take it to 10,000. That'll work fine. It's not an altitude restriction in this case. See, I'm going to shrunk that down for you. I hope you appreciate that. So uh, we've already come to find that about 1800 feet per minute is probably pretty good, but we are going to need to pull those throttles back pretty quickly. Let's just go ahead and roll those back. There we go. That seems pretty neat, actually, doesn't it? Let's get this thing out of right there. Okay. You can see the difference. You can see the line right there. That's what you get when you have photoreal scenery that you know only covers a certain area. Obviously, our photoreal scenery does not cover up there, but it does cover down here. It doesn't seem to be hurting our frame rates, really. Maybe just a tiny bit. Sometimes you get that with the freeware stuff. Uh, but I think we're going to be all right. We'll just keep an eye on things here, uh, you know, just for the heck of it. Let's hop outside the aircraft here real quick. Let's just take a look at the scene. This might be just a little loud. I apologize if it is. That's pretty neat, actually. Uh, seeing that photo reel like that, uh, I think whatever photo they used for it was probably a little off in color. But uh, you get a more realistic look at your uh, your town and city down there and stuff like that, which is uh, pretty neat stuff, actually. That's going to be Interstate 10 coming down into Tucson there. Uh, and this, I believe, is probably Miranda Airport, but I'm not 100% positive on that. But it uh, still looks pretty neat. I'd like for the color to be a little richer on that, maybe. But let's see how it looks when we get over to the airport, because uh, that's really what I got it for was the airport itself. So... And let's see, we, uh, oh man, we're, we're just jumping way ahead here, aren't we? Where are we at here? We need to be, we need to be down to 5,000, uh, by the time we get the calls. Uh, 4,600 on that, so let's take this thing down to 5,000 here. And that way we're, uh, we're setting up for that, because I don't think we're going to, overshoot any of our altitude restrictions doing that. You can see we do have some mountains in front of us, uh, so we want to make sure that obviously we don't run into those mountains. So we're going to keep an eye on that if we need to adjust our rate of descent, uh, which in fact I, I think we probably do. We're going to go ahead and 
bring that up just a little bit. Uh, let's bring it up to 1300 feet per minute. I think that would be good. Okay, we're uh, just under 20 miles out. We are already on our final approach fix, which is 124 degrees. Uh, we do have the ILS tuned in, but it's going to be a uh, visual approach. Uh, our descent rate's looking pretty good so far. I went ahead and pulled the throttles back just a little bit. Uh, we're going to we're going to keep decreasing that speed because we're still just a little high, not too bad. Um, but we are we're actually a couple thousand feet high, so we're just going to slow our speed down a little bit here. And you probably hear that little alarm kicking in. That's just telling me that uh, I don't have any flaps or gear or anything out yet. And that's all right. Uh, while we're doing that, let's go ahead and. Let's do our approach checklist right now. Cabin signs are no go uh, because we don't have them. Approach speed is going to be about 120 knots again. Cockpit door is good. Auto feather needs to be armed, so let's go ahead and arm that. I do apologize for the alarm there. Let me bring that throttle up just a hair. And, uh, there, shut that alarm off there. Uh, let's see, pressurization is good. Flaps and landing gear we're about to bring in and landing lights are on at this point so uh, we are going slow enough now just barely for the flash but let's go ahead and bring them in and uh, that's going to help us out with slowing down a good bit there so 17 degrees flaps we're good on that sorry if there's just a little bit of stutter there uh, and that's helping bring our speed down nicely and uh, we're just about to wasson we need to be at 5500 feet there we are not let's go ahead and uh, I kind of messed up on that thing I thought we needed to slow our rate of descent a little bit, but apparently we did not. So, still looking good here. You can see this is our airport dead ahead here. Uh, a little bit harder to see with that photo real scenery, uh, especially with uh, the way I've got my weather set up on here. You know, I've got the maximum distance uh, that you can see from the air slightly limited. Uh, nice little view coming down over the mountains here. I actually used to live in this area for a little while when I was a kid. It's not too bad. It does get a little warm, but it actually snows here sometimes in the winter, so in case you didn't know that. Uh, let's see. We're just about to 5,000 feet, and we actually need to go ahead and move that all the way down to 4,600 at this point. And cancel out that alarm, and we will be on visual approach here shortly. We're definitely a little high. Go ahead and bring that landing gear down. Gear down. There it comes. It's going to help slow us down a little. Actually, we're just about spot on glide slope at this point, so that's fantastic. Let's go ahead and bring our prop levers all the way forward. Not sure why that wasn't on the. Uh, I must have missed that somewhere. How did I miss prop levers? I didn't. They're showing up. But we do want prop levers all the way forward. Bring the flaps all the way in at this point. Let's just check to make sure our flaps came all the way in. You can see we went just a little bit below the glide slope there. There's our flaps. That's all right though. We're actually looking really good here. We're gonna get right where we want to be on the glide slope. And bring in some power now. Bring in some power. Oh yeah, we got a little slow there. Bring that power up. That was my fault. I wasn't paying attention to the power. All right, let's go ahead and kick this autopilot off. Make sure it doesn't jerk really hard on us. Yaw damper off, autopilot off. Get the nav and altitude off. Turn that guy off. And we definitely need a little bit higher rate of descent. It's coming in right now. We're looking good for our approach there. Let's bring her on in. still a little bit high here drifting just a little bit as well we got a little bit of a actually turned in it's a tailwind right now but uh, it shouldn't be when we get down and, but it is a bit of a crosswind just a little one four knots yeah I just want to back the throttles off I'm not adjusting my trim I'm actually just backing my throttles off a little bit and using that to increase our rate of descent so we're just using the throttles. Uh, good throttle control really helps a lot. So we're at about, uh, you can see we're about 800 feet per minute there. 
which is uh, probably right about where we need to be. So we're just a scotch high. You can see we've got three white lights and one red on our pappy there. And uh, that's okay. Yep, still too high. Now let's back those throttles off a little bit more. So we were at about 83, which is right about where I want to be. So I back them off a little bit more. And as that speed dies off, you see the nose starts to come down. And then as the speed comes back up, our rate of descent will decrease. And that's what we want. So right there, and I can just pull back real lightly on the yoke and bring those throttles right back about where I want them. And just fly around. We should get our 500 foot call here in a minute. Pretty, pretty good approach at this point. The airport's looking really good. Wow, I'm, I'm impressed with that. It looks really nice out there. Lots of aircraft. Good stuff. I always 500. Do. It's making me rethink my policy on uh, payware airports, to be honest with you, though this one was free. But uh, yeah, I might uh, be taking a closer look at some of those paywares pretty soon. Because those, I know the one for Phoenix, I did the trial on it once, and it is fantastic. So, looking really good here. We're going to fly her all the way to the ground. Always fly the aircraft. Until those wheels touch down, you want to fly that aircraft. So, all the way down to the ground. Got just a scotch high there. Flying it down. Just, that's called the transition phase for a small aircraft. Start pulling those throttles back. Loaded it a little bit. Oh, what happened? What was that? What was that? You see that? Oh my goodness, that was insane. Everything was perfect, and all of a sudden it just yanked to the right there. Man, we barely hung on to that thing. That was ridiculous. What the heck just happened? Man, we are just we're skidding and sliding all over. I didn't even hit the exit right. That was horrible. <laughs> that was absolutely ridiculous right there. I have no idea what just happened. There shouldn't have been any wake turbulence or no other aircraft around. And it just suddenly yanked to the side there. That was that was ludicrous. <laughs> that really stunk. That killed our landing rate too. Our landing rate was 100 and 170 feet per minute. That was just ouch. My goodness. Good thing we didn't crash the airplane, huh? Wow. That was, uh, yeah. I would say I'm embarrassed, but I'm not. That wasn't, that wasn't me. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything at all. It just did all that on its own. All right, after landing checklist real quick. We don't have power steering. We need to bring our uh, prop pitch levers back to the taxi detent. So we'll just roll those on back to there. Good to go. Lights are as required. We don't need landing lights now that we're on the ground, but we'll keep our taxi lights on. Engine anti-ice is supposed to be on at this point because we're on the ground. Good to go there. Stall warning heat can come off. Left and right pedo heat comes off. Come on. Couldn't click there. Ice protection is good to go. We haven't really put anything on transponder. We'll go to standby. We can't move. The trim is fine where it's at. Flaps are up. Radar is off. And what else? That's it. Everything's good. So we are ready to taxi in. Okay, so uh, yeah, after that absolutely insane landing, which I think was a, a glitch with my controller, to be honest with you, because earlier, um, right before I clicked this one off, I don't know if you noticed in the video, right before I clicked this yoke off, it was actually all the way to the right like that. I have no idea why. Don't know what happened, but it is what it is. We got her on the ground, uh, so we're just gonna have to deal with it. So let's go ahead and taxi in here now, uh, get our shutdown taken care of, and we can call it a day on this one. Oh boy, I cranked that up way too fast, didn't I? Get back down here, you See how they're a little uneven, which can be a little bit, see it's making me kind of all over the place here. Alright. I think uh, <laughs> we're s semi under control, although I have no idea. I mean, that little tiny bit, you know, 0.2 difference in the N1, in my opinion, should not be making the aircraft uh, 
try to flail off to the right side like that. I mean, it's just not, uh, it's not that big of a difference. It's really not. Now, I don't have a multi-engine rating, so I don't know. Maybe in real life it really does that. But, uh, you know, the faster we go, the, the more dramatic it is as well. So, you know, obviously we need to, we need to slow down a little bit. We're moving along pretty quick here. So, we'll just go ahead and slow it down. And uh, I'm trying to even those two out. They're just not, they're not cooperating. <laughs> and uh, we're a cargo flight, uh, so we are going to look for cargo ramp here. I could have used, I have GSX. I don't really tend to use it with these small airplanes. Um, not for any particular reason other than uh, it just, I don't know, it seems a little odd to me. Uh, but I could have gotten a uh, follow me vehicle to come out. You guys don't know what that is. It's a little vehicle that comes out and takes you to a parking place of your choice. Pretty sure uh, the cargo area is just north of the tower there. So we'll go ahead and we'll just taxi up north of the tower and uh, hopefully we'll find us a parking space. My goodness, I'm just look at this. I'm all over the place. It's kind of embarrassing. Uh, it looks like uh, this taxiway, yeah, we turned into this taxiway, and let's go up there, so we're just going to take this right here. You know what? <laughs> I'm a little annoyed at that landing, so uh, I think I'm just going to take what I can get here. And uh, we'll just park it right up here, and we will call it good, because I don't know what, I don't know what happened. You know, I, my yoke is a little old. I got, you know, if I'm going to be honest about it, my yoke is a little old, and my guess is that it's just developed a little glitch there, uh, unless somebody knows of something that causes that, you know, if you do, give me a heads up, let me know what it is that causes stuff like that, that may be what happened a couple flights ago when we thought it was, uh, well, I thought it was uh, the wake turbulence or the wake vortex from the, uh, DC-9 slash MD-80 that took off ahead of us. I may have been wrong about that. It may turn out that it was uh, that it was that little glitch right there. Which is, you know, that's that's an obnoxious glitch to have. <laughs> I mean, really? What the heck is going on, right? Oh, man. Maybe it's, it's, I pulled those throttles way back. This, this thing just wants to go right now. We are light on fuel. I'm sure that's part of it. But here we are. We've arrived safe and sound. Nobody died. Just a bit of a rough landing, but hey, that's those mad skills from the left seat, right? Come on now. G give me a thumbs up if, if that's pretty good skills to, to land that, because I do have the detect crashes and damage setting turned on, in case anybody's wondering. Okay, shutdown procedure real quick. Parking brake set. It is power steering. We don't have IFAS power switches need to come off at this point. Those are off now. Standby attitude indicator is good. IFAS auxiliary doesn't work. Avionics switch needs to come off. There's the avionics. Off they go. Left and right AC bus both need to go off. That's a right click on those two right there. Oxygen control if it's the last flight of the day. We haven't messed with that. Did I miss putting those on earlier? It looks like I did, huh? Because those should have been on. <laughs> awesome. Don't I feel fantastic now? Uh, auto feather switches need to go off. That's these ones right here. Those are off. Lights can go off at this point, except for... Boy, we just... I messed up this whole flight. Look at this. I never put anti-collision lights in flight mode. They're still in ground mode. I'm just a soup sandwich. But we press on. Uh, fuel system auxiliary pump switches were never on. Battery is charged. And condition levers go to fuel cutoff. That's these ones here. Propellers go to feathered. That's that one there. Uh, I know you probably want my, I used my little uh, throttle butter. Fuel cutoff, feathered. Overhead panel switches are already off. Uh, the generators come off at this point. So we'll go ahead and uh, switch those off. And switch the battery off. And then we can open the cabin door. That was interesting. What on earth is that? <laughs> what is 
that? I opened the door, and now it looks like it shows the back head of the pilot right there. Let's see if I just close it and see what happens. Main exit closing. Oh, no. You know what? I know exactly what just happened. This has happened to me before. See? Another airplane just pulled in right on top of us. Yeah, way to go there, buddy. Thanks for that. Uh, I guess we don't count. Uh, but there we are. We're all shut down, even though we have an airplane sitting on top of us. We're all shut down now, and we are ready to jump back over to eight cars real fast, shut down the, or uh, file our pie rep, and then uh, we'll hop over to the website and see where we stand. So I'll see you guys over there in just a minute. Okay, here we are with our PVA cars. Uh, you can see we're only a couple minutes late, three minutes late on this one, which I'm pretty sure is going to count as on time. Uh, but we want to go ahead and end this flight right now. We don't want that going up any higher than it already has. I hope you didn't hear my phone ding in the background. I meant to put it on silent. Uh, it says it's not parked at a gate. That's okay. We're in a parking space. We do wish to continue. So we're good to go there. You can see where it goes to the pre-flight mode, which means we're ready to start setting up for the next flight after we file the PIREP. we got to make sure we push this button here. So file PIREP. It is filed. Our ID number is 136-231. We are good to go. That clears everything out, and we are done with our A cars. So I will see you over in the website shortly. We'll see where we stand and get an idea what our next flight is going to be like. Okay, here we are back on the website. Flight's all done. You can see here uh, our pilot report has been approved. We've got five flights under our belt now. Uh, looks like we got 14 hours to go. Actually, just a, just a skosh over 14 hours. This is just a quick look. This tells us where we're really at. Remember, when we get close to that 20-hour mark, we got to make sure we actually go over 20 hours to get our promotion. So we'll keep an eye on that. I uh, made a couple mistakes during the flight there. That'll happen sometimes. You know what? I was going probably a little too fast in an effort to try and shorten these videos up a bit. Uh, I just need to pay a little closer attention to my procedures, but... Uh, uh, I apologize for that, and uh, feel free to make note in the comments uh, of anything you th you uh, you notice me missing there. But uh, real quick, let's take a look at our uh, pilot report here. Good profit percentage, 54.2 percent. Revenue was 266 dollars. That's pretty good for that short little flight down there. We had that really rough, crazy landing. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what's going on with uh, with the controller there. See if I can figure out why it did that, but. Um, Hey, you know what? We managed to put it on the ground without crashing the airplane. You can see here, Flight Critic says we didn't have any crashes. I do have uh, crashes and damage turned on in my flight sim, so if we had crashed the aircraft, uh, we'd know it. So we're good to go there. Uh, basic information, and uh, yeah, I don't really know why it's showing up like that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we can't really see our route there, I guess. But uh, we we followed it for the most part. We, we followed what we, uh, what we selected there in... Uh, a cars, but we're good to go. So that wraps up uh, flight number five for uh, the life of a virtual airline pilot series here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the flight. I know I did. I'm uh, looking forward to the next one. We're going to be flying from Tucson over to Nogales, and then we'll have a little bit longer flight from Nogales over to Phoenix. You can see those right down here. So I'm looking forward to those. Uh, if you liked the video, please uh, give it a thumbs up down below, and uh, please subscribe to my channel. And I look forward to continuing this journey with you. I'll see you on the next flight.